All right, I want to make this very, very quick video. So I'm going to talk about League of Legends, right? I call it the theory of League of Legends. <clears throat> and this came to me when I was watching this guy, LS Coach. I'm telling you, this guy is a rock star. The way he explains everything is perfect. And he comes from card games, right? So he confirmed the fact that League of Legends is a card game to me. That's one thing I'm going to be talking about. And other things are going to be like this rule here, mentality, why it's important. Team composition and gold, and also lane. All right, so let's jump into the first one. Right, the, fir the first most important thing is 40 40 20 rule. Right, now this is important for mentality. Okay, so 40% of your games you're going to lose no matter what. I mean, this is your team throwing, feeding, ADC mispositioning, uh, people going AFK, people throwing, people trolling. Right, this 40% of games you're gonna win because now you're on the other side. Right. Their enemy team is just trolling, throwing, doing all this weird shit, right? And then 20% of games are going to be back and forth, and you have to perform really well. So, why is this very, very important to know, right? Because, like, I got this from this interview, and this guy confirmed what I was thinking about. So, this is a niece. He interviewed, like, a challenger jungler, right? And they asked him, you know, okay, so you like to play Nunu? How do you carry as Nunu in low elo, right? How do you do that? And he says, you don't have to carry, right? You don't have to carry. Because these games, you're going to lose anyway. Whether you play Nunu, whether you play Kha'Zix, it doesn't matter. You're going to lose them anyway, right? Whereas if you play Nunu in here, he's going to work really well. All right? So these games, you just have to let go. Now. Here is the very, very important mental aspect, right? People who play things like Trindamir, Yi, right? Riven, Fiora. Well, Fiora is not there, I think. Well, this champion, you know, Trindamir, Yi, kind of carry champions. Nocturne, I think, is in here as well, right? What they're trying to do, they're trying to win this game here, okay? Like, in their mind, they're trying to think, how do I carry every single game and win every single game? You cannot do that in League of Legends. You cannot do it. It is not possible, right? Nobody, nobody has ever done it, okay? It is not possible. People, like people, top challenger players, dual queued sometimes, and they sometimes lose games in silver. Top challenger players cannot carry in silver sometimes. It, it rarely, rarely, but I've seen it happen, right? So can you imagine, can you imagine the teammates that they are being placed with that they two top tier players cannot win the game? It means, you see in League of Legends there is a problem where feeder is worse than AFK, right? Like, you have to understand that Feeder, I will actually write it down here. Feeder is worse than AFK. I'll give you an example, right? How did my team won the game 3 versus 5, right? Because we had we had one AFK, right? And I was, I was technically in the game, but I was actually AFK, right? Because I was trolling, right? That's because the enemy team had four Feeders, right? And that's it. If you have feeders on your team, they are worse than AFK. And that's it. Right? That's how you can win three versus five. Because of feeders. Alright. So what I'm saying is if you're thinking to yourself, how can I win 100 percent of the games? You will not be able to do that. That's it. Just let it go. Like this guy, he's a challenger, grandmaster. I mean, he has been playing this game since like season one, right? <laughs> And his intention was to go professional in League of Legends, right? So he says, just let it go, dude. You're not going to win this. That's it. Focus on the other games. Focus on extracting mistakes, all right? What you should have done differently, okay? So this is lesson to me, personally. 100% win rate is impossible, right? 100% win rate is not possible. And he said himself, 
strive towards 60% win rate, right? Because statistically speaking, 60% win rate is the max you can go, right? Is the max you can go. Does that make sense? Because in League of Legends, 60% is 100% because of those games, right? What 60% means is that you are winning every single game where the enemy team trolls and you're winning every single game where you are the catalyst of success. You are the driver, right? That means you are 100% doing everything correctly, all right? So think of 60%. So if you have a win rate of 57%, you are doing really well, like exceptionally well, all right? Well, but that means you're playing outside of your ELO, right? That's why, like, you see players, like, they have, like, 88% win rate, 71%. That's because they're playing way below their weight. Okay? So, like, if you're, like, if you have, like, 69% win rate, you're playing not in your ELO, right? And if, and if you're in challenger, if you're in challenger with 60% win rate, you going to be rank 1. For sure. Well, let's see, are there challenger players in here? Well, let's look at the ladder and uh, the win rates, right? Let's just look at blah, 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 blah. Let's take this guy here. He's top seven player. 69, 57, 67, 63, right? So you see, he's doing really well, right? So what I'm saying fundamentally is do not try to win them, let them go. And that's it. Focus on these games, right? Okay. So this is this part here. The second part is think of it as a card game, right? This goes to talk. This this covers the team composition, all right? Because if you if you watch this guy, LS coach, he comes from a card game perspective, and when he breaks down, like the he has a channel, I am LC, right? And you can watch when when LCS is on, when the professional gaming is on, he sits there and he comments and he breaks down the game for you, right? And you will notice that, right? He just straight off says that team compositions, you win games in draft. That's it. That's how you win games, right? He also likes to compare champions like Udir right now versus uh, Olaf right now, right? He says Udir and Olaf are exactly the same champion, only Udir would be like a rare card versus um, Olaf being common card, right? Ud like Udir is just an upgrade to Olaf. He does everything that Olaf does, only way better. All right? So, that's what I'm saying is, um, it's a card game, right? So, when you look at the card, when you look at the team compositions, you need to look at it as a unit and a card. If I have, think of it as bots against bots, right? Bots against bots. When they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? Which team is gonna win the game? So let's let's compare. I don't know. Let's let's do let's do comparison. Let's put this at eleven. Let's put table. Okay. So top lane. Let's say we have Malphite, right? Here top lane, Train the Mirror, right? Or Riven. Let's put Riven. Right, Riven. Jungle, let's say... Um, Sejuani, right? Jungle. Their jungle, let's say... Graves, right? Mid lane, let's say Victor. 
let's say Ari, right? Bot lane, let's say we have uh, Kaisa, and here we have Severe. Support, let's put Trash, and here Janna. Okay, like my money is in here. All right, look, they have shitloads of crowd control. Okay, they have shitloads of damage. They have frontline. If this team plays correctly, there is no way this team is going to win. There is just it's 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 just physically impossible. Like it's just impossible mathematically. Because think about it, Riven cannot engage on Victor or Kaisa. Because of Malphite, Sejuani, and Trash. We'll peel for them, right? Severe late game does no damage to this composition. Because, like, they can just stack armor and that's it. Ari is not a strong damage threat to the front line. Right? Unless she's, like, super fed, she is not a big damage source, right? Plus, she requires a lot of correct positioning and she needs the front line to function. They don't have a front line. Graves has no damage late game against this team composition. Janna, what is she gonna do in here? Like this, this pick in here is troll into this composition, right? However, in solo queue, sometimes this team loses to this team, right? But that's because you are probably playing this game here. We'll call it the loser's queue, right? That's the loser's queue. It's possible, right? But if you look at it from card game perspective, this game, this team should not lose at all. So this is why when you watch professional level, you can see one team drafts this, this, this team drafts this. You know that these are professional players, so they will play everything correctly. So this team just automatically loses, and that's it. It's like if you want to test this, play one-on-one -on -one games and, and do counter-picking. Right, because think about it, right in in solo queue, sometimes people can outplay their counter pick. It doesn't mean that they are like super good at their champion. It means that the other guy does not know what he's doing. Like I as Trindemir can beat Timo consistently, right? And I'll tell you how to do it, right? First of all, Timo has mana issues, right? So he will spam and spam and spam and spam his abilities, right? When you're playing Timo versus Trindemir. You don't really have to kill Trindemir. You just have to break even with him. If you break even with Trindemir, he'll be useless for the whole game. Right? Because Trindemir needs to be ahead to function. He needs, like, items. Good items. Right? Because as soon as people start buying armor, he becomes useless. That goes for everybody else. Right? Also, like, Timo in team fights counters Trindemir with his blind. Alright? Because Trindemir, like, for two and a half seconds he cannot do damage so if you time your blind with his ulti he's doomed that's it you effectively won the game on one button right but people how do they lose they spam their abilities they go on they use the blind for damage right as soon as timo uses blind right like here's here's how it happens i have full fury timo uses blind I catch him on W, I activate Ghost, and I right-click him to death. That's it. That's how it works. All right. So, it's not that I am, as Trindemir, playing well. It's just that Timo is doing brain-dead stuff. Right? Okay. So, this is team compositions. Okay, another thing I need to think about is gold does not matter. Right? I'll give you an example. I was trolling, but then I started to get a bit serious. Right? Um, EU West. Um, Fruit, Love 2. Alright. So I was kind of trolling the games, but then I kind of became a little bit more serious. But I mean, look at this game I played seriously, right? Look at my gold. Like, I have no money in this game at all. Where's the gold? Man, they don't show you the gold in here. I have to log in into the account one second. Uno momento. <laughs> Uno 
Honestly, I was trying to get to bronze, but like I couldn't get to bronze for some reasons. I ended up like silver, you know. Even though I was trolling, I still ended up in silver. So stupid. <sighs> Look at my gold. I have the lowest gold in the entire game. And I effectively, like me and Trash, effectively won this game. Because, like, they had Garen top, right? No, no, they had this guy top. And he was completely useless. Garen and this guy were completely useless because every time they would engage, I would knock them up, right? Trash would peel. I would knock this guy out of the team fight. This guy here. And then I would exhaust Garen and he would die. That's it. That's literally what's happening every single game. I will show you in the team fight. There was like a Baron fight where it's just like it's it, it was it's, it's it was unplay like for them it was unplayable basically. Where is the Baron fight? I think it's in here, right? I think it was like a big mess. There was a Baron fight somewhere, right? I think Baron fight kind of shows this because... Um, well, this guy kind of threw. Yeah, but look, you see, Garen is trying to kill... Like, Garen, Garen is a very one-dimensional chump. What he does is he flashes, he exhausts, he activates his W, he spins, and then he finishes with the ulti and he flashes out. He cannot do that in here, right? Because we have too much support. You see, boom, exhaust. He's going to get a knockup next, right? So he did no damage to Kaisa. Do you see? No damage, right? He knocked up. Now he cannot escape. I'm going to knock him back again. Do you see? Boom. Right? That's it. And exhaust is still on. Do you know what I mean? Like, exhaust is still on. And I have my knockup coming up soon, right? Like, normally, normally, normally. Let's say I was some kind of Trindamir. He would kill the Kaisa and run away right now. But because I'm Alistair with exhaust, like, he can't do much, right? That was, um, that's kind of shitty. Shitty fight in here. Yeah, this engage in here. As well. That was also pretty good. You see, Garen is doing his Garen thing, where he's trying to get on Kaisa. He's going to flash. You'll see. He's going to flash. Right? No. But you see, like, he's doing no damage to me, like, at all. It makes no difference to me. Kaisa mispositions, accidentally. I don't know why she's not here, but she's supposed to be damaging. Right? Okay. But you see, like, I've been tanking <laughs> for, like, two seconds now. And that's because of my ulti. Do you know what I mean? Like, ulti is just 2 OP. 65% damage reduction and 61% damage reduction. I mean, they do no damage at this stage, right? Do you see, like, gold-wise, their team is ahead. Their team is ahead. But because they have no crowd control, they have no tankiness. I mean, who is tanky and who has crowd control on their team? No one. No one has crowd control. Whereas we have mass, like Alistair's crowd control machine, right? And Alistair is a tank. I mean, there is no better tank than Alistair in this game. Because he has an R, which is not very long cooldown, right? And he's unkillable. Cannot kill this guy. 
And late game, he has like 5,000 HP with 85% damage reduction on R, which lasts, God knows how long, 7 seconds, right? I think it even goes up to like 8 seconds or something. And then plus his armor, he has like 300 armor, which is another 75 damage reduction, right? You will not, not kill Alistair at all. Plus, plus, I can buy a Gargoyle Plate, and I mean, it will take the entire team probably 20 seconds just to, if everybody focuses fires on Alistair, right, late game, six items, it'll probably take you 20 to 25 seconds to kill him. Do you know what I'm saying? Team fight is just not going to last. How many, how many Qs, which will be four seconds, right? I can, I can get five Qs off, right? This thing also stuns. I will probably be able to do four or three of those, right? Plus headbutt, right? Two or three times per team fight. I mean, this is crazy. This champ needs no items to function. That's why I'm testing him top lane, right? But you see, they are ahead in every department, right? They have all the dragons, which is gold value. They are ahead in gold. They are ahead in kills. Okay. Let's look at the kills, right? They have better items, but the problem is their team composition sucks. As simple as that. They are just their team composition is bad. And it does not matter. The dragons don't matter. Nothing matters. Because in here, right, we are think of it as a card game, right? We have superior hand than they do, right? So their advantage doesn't matter, right? Because as soon as the team fight starts, their gold becomes useless. I'm going to talk to you about gold use usefulness. Well, let's talk about it now. Okay. If you look at our team composition, let's say they have Trindamir and Master Yi with six items. All right. Here's the problem with Champions like Trindamir, Riven, uh, Master Yi, right? Champions that that only um, only build damage, right? Crowd control completely cancels completely cancels uh, their gold efficiency, their gold. Okay, because think about it this way: Master Yi on six items and Master Yi on one item, in terms of health. Is exactly the same champion, right? So when must when you knock up Master Yi and you exhaust him, right? Whether he has 20 items or he has no items, his health and armor is exactly the same, right? So he will get one shotted by Kaisa in a second, whether he has six items or one item, right? So crowd control will balance the gold. This is why those champions are so bad, right? Because one knockup and all of your 20-minute farming went out the window. Why? Because you bought only offensive items. All right? And like I mentioned before, they give you no health stats. You're going to get one shot at whether you have 20 items or you have one item. It makes no difference, right? So I'm telling you, you see Master Yi... Alistair instant lock-in. Play Alistair mid lane if you have to, right? Because Master Yi fed makes no difference to you, right? Absolutely makes no difference. You press Q, he dies. That's it, right? Even if he has 25 items. All right. So this kind of demonstrates this, right? Because we have crowd control. We have tankiness. We have frontline. Their gold is irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant, right? And you see, like, Garen is, like, useless. Do you know what I mean? He's just, like, he's running around and he's being useless. Why? Because he's going to get knocked up again. Right? Look. Boom. There he goes up again, right? And now Trash is going to knock him out, right? There he is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, how long was he moving for? For three seconds, he was standing still. And all this time, my team was just bursting him. And this is... Under their turret. Right? This is happening under their turret. They cannot even run away under the turret. Because Alistair can tank a turret shot. No problem, right? Look at this damage. Like, 25 damage. Like, come on, people. Right? And look, do you see what I'm saying? Like, supports. Supports, man. 
<laughs> look, like she's attacking, she does no damage. Do you know what I mean? Like what, 262? Dude, that's 11 shots. Severe has to like... <laughs> like, it's hilarious, right? I think they re-engage. I mean, do you see what I'm doing? They're trying to kill Alistair. I mean, dude, you're not gonna kill Alistair. Come on, man. It's not happening. In here, I wish I had war mogs, honestly. Man, this damage, this this item does so much damage. It's crazy. Sunfire cape. You stand there and you do 350 per second damage, right? Look. Look at this damage. 215 damage over 5 seconds to enemies, right? Plus 230 and it stuns everyone. Think about it. It stuns everyone. So they have to run. There is no way they're going to stand in this, right? That's that's one problem, right? So he can out he can zone you, right? Then he can pulverize 239 damage to everyone, right? This is just like a repositioning of a, of a. Uh... I'm telling you, this champ, I think he is a hidden, hidden top lane meta. I'm pretty sure Alistair is gonna be played top lane, because he's just because I, I look at like LCS games, and I see, for example, they play Cyan top lane, and they say, oh my god, he's like such a good frontliner. He is like he has crowd control and he's tanky and he cannot be killed. Dude, Alistair does everything better than Sign. Absolutely everything. Right. Now I, I would <clears throat> they say oh Sion is like super tanky late game. Dude, Alistair is way tankier. There is no champion, no champion tankier than, than Alistair late game. It's just like there maybe Chogaf late game with like 8,000 HP, possibly, right? But still, you have to understand, his R is 85% damage reduction at level 3. Like, you just don't do anything to him, right? And he has, like, has like 300 armor and, like, 5,000 HP. Like, you're just not gonna kill this guy, right? It's just not possible. But it's, and, and it's, it's on low cooldown as well. It's, it's like, with um, with full build, it's like 50 or 40 seconds. By the time it wears off, it will be back again. Do you know what I mean? Like by the time the team fight finishes or something, it will be back again, right? I think there's another team fight, right? So you see, they're trying to engage. This guy is... Uh, I don't know why he, he went this way. <clears throat> he got scared or something, I think, right? But do you see, like, he's desperately trying to kill Alistair. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, in this game, the reason why we're kind of behind, I will show you the problem. Arkaisa bought Gale Force. That that's 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 kind of the main problem in here. I'll show you why why it's a problem. There was a fight in here, I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's this one fight in here. You see the problem, like she's just not doing any damage. 
It's this team fight, I think, right? 21 minutes is the first one, right? Yeah, it's this team fight here. You see, we trade Kaisa for free, or we trade uh, Senna for free, right? Look at their positioning, right? Everything is perfect. We engage. Garen gets knocked up. He's probably gonna get exhausted, right? Yeah, I exhaust him, I think, right? No, I didn't. So, but you see the problem, like, uh, Kaisa is not doing any damage. Do you see? Do you see, like, her damage is just so small. So, Garen is able to chunk us very, very quickly. Even though tanks, tanks, tank damage for Kaisa and crowd control Garen. Because um, we lost trash to Garen, basically, right? You see, her damage is just too small, right? That's because she has Gale Force. You see, this guy, this guy, this guy is gonna do like crazy amount of damage because he bought the right item, basically. That's it. And also, Kaisa did not back. I think no, she did. Like by gold, by gold, Kaisa is ahead, but because she bought the wrong items, she's struggling right now. Do you know what I mean? Do you see how long it took Kaisa to kill one Garen? It's just it takes way too long. And you see, like, now she cannot kill Nar again. So she is being peeled for. Everything is perfect. We are doing our job. Our tanks, Trash sacrificed himself, right? He positioned correctly. He ulted correctly. But if you look, you see, like, she just does not do any damage. Do you see? Like, she tickles. Tickles this guy. Do you know what I mean? Look how long it takes. And this guy is not super tanky. I mean, what does he have? Like, a little bit of armor. Right? You see, like, she's standing there auto-attacking and she just does not do any damage. Do you know what I mean? So you see, like, relative to her, Severe is just, like, decimating everyone. Do you see, like, Severe's damage, right? Like, I have a lot of armor as well, right? 157. And I have um, these boots as well, right? This guy kind of trolled, honestly. Why did he disengage in here? Yeah, this was trolled by this guy. He has all of his cooldown and he just disengaged for no reason whatsoever. But this guy was kind of trolling for the whole game, honestly. But like I'll show you another one. You'll see that you like this kind of this kind of is you you could say okay uh, this guy kind of trolled that's why we lost. But I think the problem here was main problem was Kaisa damage. You will see in here clearly like clearly Kaisa damage is a big big problem. Is uh, in here in this team fight because look you see both of them engage on me under the turret. I crowd control them and Kaisa can do whatever the hell she wants. Do you see? But the problem is she simply does no damage. That's because, again, she bought the wrong items. The Collector, do you know what I mean? Gale Force. Imagine she had um, Kraken Slayer and Phantom Dancer. And because Phantom Dancer is a lot cheaper than Collector, she could have bought maybe uh, a bit of, I don't know, what, what ice items does Kaisa buy, right? But another, like, component. But if you buy a uh, Phantom Dancer and Infin in the Kraken Slayer, dude, you're going to be decimating tanks. Right? See the problem? Like, under the turret, they're smacking Alistair, who ulted, and Kaisa cannot kill two tanks. She just, like, she does absolutely no damage. It still ended up being war for us because these guys are trolling. They traded support. Well, basically, Alistair for. Like and they gave, gave a kill to, to Kaisa, but I mean, do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? Is like, is like Kaisa, can you do damage, please? <laughs> right, please. Oh, she also has an incorrect rune, I think. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a wrong rune. She has a hail of blades, which is not very good on her, I think. Right. <laughs> They still technically should win this because 
because this guy has no um, ignite and uh, Damasia justice and R. But you see the problem, like she's just standing there hitting and she's doing no damage. Anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about gold efficiency, right? Now, to prove my theory, to prove my theory, all you have to do is download basically this app here, Blitz. Blitz. Gg. I think, right? This this app here. This one here. Now, and I'll show you. If you play, if you play Trindamir, for example, you will pick Trindamir. It gives you statistics. It will tell you that you will win your lane seventy percent of the time, but you will win your game only forty-three percent of the time. So when I'm playing against Garen, for example, I stomp him in lane. It happens to me all the time, all the time. I go like five-zero in lane against Garen, and then I end up losing the game. And I'm thinking to myself, why is that? Why I have, I killed him five times. I'm three levels ahead of him. I have so much gold. Why is this happening? And that's very simple. Because Garen is a good card to have in your team fight. Like this game is all about team fighting, right? Like Aram and uh, Rift and Summer's Rift is exactly the same map when you think about it, right? Because on Summoner's Rift, what happens is you push your lanes, you go fight for objective. You push your lane, you go fight for objective. That's how the game is played. That's it. Right? Whereas Trindamir pushes the lane and then keeps pushing the lane. And then your team is fighting 4 versus 5. They take all the objectives, you take the inhibitors, right? What happens is then the enemy team inhibitors respond because you cannot finish the game. Because they team fighting is better than yours, and they have all the objectives, and they have crowd control and frontline, and you have Trindamir, and then game becomes stalemate. Then you have to go Baron, right? Trindamir, of course, will try to push bottom to win to to finish off the game. Your team is going to get four v five very quickly. The enemy team takes the Baron and they just win the game. That's it. That happens to me all the time. Every single game I lose, I lose like this. I stomp my lane, I split push, I take two inhibitors, They take the enemy team takes every single objective. <clears throat> Gold-wise, we're sometimes ahead, but we cannot win a team fight. And then that's it, the enemy team just eventually overrolls us. And that's it. Some games I win because when they try to take Baron, and win a team fight four versus five. It takes them too long, which gives me an opportunity to um, win the game. Basically, I just split push. I destroy the inhibitors. What I do is I buy, like I buy the item called Sanguine Blade. It destroys turrets and inhibitors very very quickly. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to win the game alone as fast as possible, right? Sometimes it works, but most of the, but it's a bad strategy. If you do that, it will work maybe in silver, but it stops working mid mid gold, like because people just pick somebody like Fiora and they know how to play. And if Fiora feels that you are a good Trendemir player, she will back off and just farm, right? And then Fiora is a good team fighter, or Garen, Garen is a good team fighter. What they're gonna do is. Because they took all of their all, all objectives, right? Because they took all objectives, right? The Garen team <clears throat> in 4v4 is going to be stronger, <clears throat> right? Which means the 4v4 map will be played 4v4 
whereas Garen's team is stronger than your team, which means the Baron will belong to the Garen's team. And late game, Trindamir, even if he's super, super, super fed, cannot dive Garen under the turret. So what happens is Garen can simply stall Trindamir, and you just cannot win the game, right? And also, the, your only option, your only option, is to rotate. So you push the lane into Garen, right? You rotate to a team, so the team fight is now 4v5, four, four because Garen team has four players, and you are joining the team fight. The problem with that is, number one, if they have a lot of crowd control, right? Your gold does not matter. You actually do not matter in that team fight because what's going to happen? You're going to get knocked up or CC'd by trash, and you're going to get one shot at, right? And two, Garen with Gale Force, not with Gale Force, with Stride Breaker, and with Deadman's Plate can rotate as fast as you can, right? So what's going to happen is. You will push the lane in, Garen will clear it, you go to the team fight, Garen follows you, and that's it. And it's a stalemate from there. And if Garen joins the team fight, you will lose. You're just gonna lose. And that's it. So that's what I'm saying is the champ champions like Riven, Master Yi, Trindamir are kind of useless, honestly. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to win this game here. Uh, you're trying to win this game here, but it's not going to happen. And also, lane doesn't matter, right? That's what I'm saying. Is uh, just download this uh, app, download this app, and you'll see. You'll see what I mean. You'll see that you pick the champion that will win the lane against this champion all the time, but your win rate for the game is very small. So you have to focus on the win rate of the game, not of the lane, because if you want to win your lane, do just pick Darius. Like, Darius always wins his lane. Or Nasus is also a good pick right now. Nasus almost wins lane against everyone, right? You will struggle early, but as soon as you get, like, 120 stacks and Sheen, you beat everyone. Absolutely everyone. There is no champion in the game that can one-on-one -on -one you. Maybe except for Mordekaiser, right? Just ban Mordekaiser and that's it. You win. Well, Ilawi can beat you still, but, I mean, who plays Ilawi, do you know what I mean? No one plays Ilawi. Right, so focus on game outcome, not lane outcome. All right. And that's about it. Okay, so to sum it up, sum it up, right? Do not try to win those games because it's irrelevant. Those games are just, they're irrelevant. Try to watch replays and extract. In here, you can focus on laning phase, right? You think to yourself, it's a waste of time. You can focus, because first 15 minutes, al although your team is going to feed their asses off, first 15 minutes still belong to you, right? So just focus on those 15 minutes, all right? Mentality-wise, it's, it's good, right? And next thing is team composition is everything, all right? Team composition is the most important thing, right? And... Yeah, if you have the good team composition, gold difference doesn't matter. All right, that's it. As you saw in my replay, right? Look, I have the lowest gold, but I'm I'm like the most helpful champion in the game. I am more useful than these guys. Like by far. Oh, this guy, this guy here, right? He is the most useless on the map. This guy was this guy, even though he had the most gold. He was the most useless. Oh, also a Senna. Don't play Senna, dude. Do not play Senna. Completely useless champion. Does absolutely nothing in teamfight. Senna is like Nidalee. If I see Nidalee, I dodge instantly. If I see Senna, I just dodge. Oh, by the way, OPGG gives you uh, things like... like if, you, if you watch LS Coach, right? If you watch LS Coach... He recommends dodging games where your winning odds are very bad, like in poker. If you if you look at your hand and you see, okay, these guys are picking champions, they don't know how to play, dodge, right? I used to go, um, I'm even going to show it to you, right? I have it in here, somewhere. I have it in here somewhere. Uh, 
it should be like team check. Yeah, there you go. There's the team check, right? So I, I look at kind of jungle mid ADC support position win. So account win rate and their champion win rate, right? This thing does this for you. You don't have to do it manually because this is very labor intensive, right? You have to go to OPGG. You have to look at every single person, look at what the person is um, picking, look at their main champions. Whereas in here, you just you just kind of just sit there, right? And uh, this this thing will kind of show you the statistics for for you, right? Like, I was actually thinking about making an app like this myself, but I mean, this thing exists, just to use it basically, right? And also what I like about it, it tells you what people weaknesses are. For example, I'm a late warder. I don't ward a lot, but that's because I tend to save my ward because I, I'm, I'm silver. <laughs> that's why there is no reason for me not to ward, all right? I have to ward. That's it. That's, that's one of my weaknesses, right? I late typically very war very 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 late right oh i know why i do that i realize why i do that because i like to freeze the lane right when you freeze the lane you don't need to ward right because i play trindamir what i like to do is i like to keep the lane keep the um, lane close to my turret so i can all in the person and when the when the when the kind of when the lane when the minions are close to your turret there's no need for you to ward because you cannot get ganked Right, as Trindemir, because if they gank you, you're gonna one v two them, no problem. Right, that's why I don't I don't ward. Right, but you can see people, for example, dies in lane, right, a lot. You can see actually, like in there, it says like dies in lane, dies in lane, right, susceptible to ganks, all right, which means they will feed. Most likely, they're gonna feed. So if you see a guy who has like 27% win rate, susceptible to ganks, dies in lane, that's a feeder. Right, you need to dodge. And if you um if you want to prove that like you can say, Oh, you know, Dimitri, you maximum platinum or diamond, you don't know what you're talking about. Watch LS Coach uh Hot Shot GG, this video here. Right? Do you see? That's that's the um, Blitz app in action. And what he says is, you need to dodge the game right now. Right? Because he's picking champions that he's bad at. Right? So you see, he dodged the game, right? All right, so use this app to your advantage as well, right? This will help you. This app will help you avoid those games here. You know, the ones that you're going to lose. It will it will actually help you to dodge them. Now, the problem with doing that, I will tell you up front, I tried to dodge every single game that I get like this. Because if you start winning a lot of games in a row, the system, um, this is another video I made, it's called Engagement Optimized Matchmaking, because the system tries to balance your wins and losses, so it will start putting you into this queue. Like LS Coach, even in this video, he said that he streams, like he, he does Twitch, he streams, and he said he, that he did five hours of dodging the game, because it was unplayable. And I personally had the same experience. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to get to 100% win rate. So for me to do that, I'm going to have to dodge those games, right? In the entire 12-hour day, in the 12-hour day, I did it for two days, right? One day I played two games, which means I dodged for six hours, right? And the second game, second day I played, I think, four games, which means I was dodging every three hours. I was playing one game per three hours, because you see, as soon as you as soon as you start getting like 80 to 90 percent win rate, right? Like if you start winning like every single game and you're stomping every single game, 
uh, the system will start putting you more and more and more into um, into those games, right? Eventually, you'll probably have to you you will end up playing like one game per three days because you have like ninety eight percent win rate, right? And every single game you stomp. So the system is like, hey, like we need to put this guy <laughs> into the loser's queue. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll be permanently in the loser's queue. Do you know what I mean? The other way to kind of avoid those games, I think, is dual queue. Because I did statistics on dual queue. If you dual queue, your win rate goes up by 20%. If your uh, dual queue partner is competent. It's, it's another way to avoid those games. But that is irrelevant, dude. You just have to mentally accept it that they, they are going to happen. Right? They are going to happen. All right? The best way is just to play the game and watch the um, replay, right? And the, the answer is, what do you do in this game? Uh, you watch your first 10 to 15 minutes and see how did you lane. The rest of the game is irrelevant, right? Because, I mean, the rest of the game is going to be Fiesta, where after like 10 to 15 minutes, their entire team is going to gank you top. Um, obviously, they're going to take Reef Herald, all the dragons and barons, and then it's pointless to even look at the game, right? So just like laning phase, and that's it. You're out. Okay. So that's it. That's the skinny. Um, good job. Take care.